I love your home already, and I haven't even seen it. Does that sound crazy? It's not. When we improve our surroundings, we simultaneously empower ourselves, which means every inch of space within your reach right now is an opportunity to tell the story you want to be living. Tell me that's not its own kind of wonderful. I have spent the last 15 years consulting clients and their homes through the wisdom of feng shui, intentional design, and some crystal clear communication. And you know what happens when you bring those three together? Life changing magic. Your home is already in a conversation with you. So why not learn how to merge that awareness with some simple, straightforward, and smart action to co-create the life you want. I'm Amanda Gibby Peters, and I am here to help you learn how. Welcome to House Therapy. You Your body and brain are under the influence and highly susceptible to the environment you're in. So when people ask me how to be more productive, feel motivated, get shiz done, well, we got to talk about your environment. There's a book I love because it is so universally recommendable, and that is Atomic Habits by James Clear. And one of the things he shares in his book is that motivation is overrated. Environment often matters more. So if you feel slowed down, run down, or like you're barely keeping up, especially as we come into this new year, I want to share some self-hospitality a la house therapy tips because they are pretty spectacular at infusing our space and us with more energy. And energy is a good thing to have when you're wanting to be more productive. Okay. So tip one, let's talk about your front door again. As you know, this is the architecturally intended front door and it is known as the mouth of chi, like your own mouth where you take in oxygen, nourishment, and water. This is where your home takes in auspicious energy, which is opportunity, refreshments, and synchronicities in your life. I want you to think of it this way. What if some of the things you do every day didn't need to be chased, hustled, manifested quite so much? What if instead you could invite those opportunities your way? Now think of your front door as the first impression. If energy, again, think opportunities, likes what it sees, it's going to beeline to you. By the way, this curb appeal topic is showing up everywhere on home trends for 2023 lists. So this one really should be easier than ever to make happen. So if you need a few easy upgrade ideas, we've covered these in a previous episode, but by way of reminder, replace any burned out lights with brighter wattage, wipe down the door and its hardware, buy a new doormat or shake out the one you currently use. Dress the door up with something fresh like flowers or potted plants. And obviously, if your town is serving up frozen vibes right now, wait until the weather warms. And sweep the space regularly with the intention of out with the old and with the new. These are seemingly simple sensibilities, but they are the details that make a real difference. So what's the productivity hack? Well, when you've got your door calling chi, again, opportunities, refreshments, possibilities your way, you don't have to spend as much of your energy making things happen. Instead, you corral that energy of yours so you're able to show up for the assignments and opportunities that do come your way. Tip two, step into your house and now let's have a look at your entry and really maximize your flex here. Consider the entry that your guests come through as well as the entry you come in on the daily. Thresholds hold a powerful sway in how we feel every day. And the easiest way to get the most out of yours, don't underestimate the power of a clean entry. And by clean, yes, I mean tidy, 
but I also mean leave a little open space. It is a well-noted and much appreciated detail. Place a basket or tray out for capturing those loose ends, you know, keys, sunglasses, or anything that might need to be returned to your guests. A simple bench or an airy hall closet that can offer refuge for coats and purses. And as for any other surface within sight and reach, keep it clear from clutter. Okay, again, what's the productivity hack behind this one? Well, without decision fatigue or overwhelm hijacking and sabotaging your attention, the quality of your own energy stays intact and at your full disposal. Tip three, move 27 things. All right, so in feng shui, we love the number three. It has an energy to it. It's heaven, earth, human. It's the holy trinity. It's health, wealth, and prosperity. And when you times three by three by three, you amp that energy potential. And that's how we land on the number 27. So whenever we move things in our home, we're disrupting tired energy patterns in our surroundings, you know, thinking the same thoughts, living the same habits, having the same experience, which could be feeling not productive. Our habits in our home are so hardwired, we aren't always paying attention. We kind of just clock out. So if you want to change your perspective, literally change what you're perceiving around you. And whenever you need an energetic recalibration, this tip has mileage. So tuck this one away. And if you want to kick this energy hack up even another notch, try getting rid of 27 things. And if clearing the clutter feels challenging, I'll tell you this, it's a clue that this endeavor is sure to bring something entirely new into your reality. So what's the productivity hack here? Well, anytime we rig an infusion of new energy moving through our space, it also means that we're going to feel that rush too. Add to it that you're seeing things differently and that translates to seeing new solutions, inspiration, or possibilities. Or as I like to say, less push feels more like, ah, thanks for the lift. All right, tip four, do you have clutter? We're talking desk clutter, on the floor clutter, closet clutter, clutter on the counters. Clutter in general weighs you down. It slows progress big time. And it's also what we notice almost immediately when we walk into someone's home or office. So here's an experience I would bet most of you have either had or can recall someone having. You're in school, you have a big assignment or project or maybe an upcoming test. And for whatever reason, you've put off doing it or studying for it to the very last minute. And now it's crunch time. But instead of sitting down to start right away, what do you do? You clean your desk or organize the space before getting started, right? Can anyone else relate? Well, from a feng shui perspective, it's no surprise. A clear space provides room for inspiration to land. It's a way of clearing our head. And energy happens to travel more efficiently across clear surfaces. So anytime we need an energetic infusion that has gusto, this is an excellent tip to employ. Also, open space signals that we have room to receive the things we want. So think of it this way. We often will lament that we want more or something different in our lives, but when we look around, if every space and place is filled to the brim, it's actually sending a signal to our brains that we don't have room for something new. Translation, we might also not be ready to handle more. And we all know that more is not necessarily better, right? Like an abundance of things does not unequivocally equate to an abundant life. And I'll tell you something else. After doing this work for over 15 years, I know that there are two things that everyone seems to agree on really wanting when we get to the root of it. And that is more time and more space. So the productivity hack here is clear space means we don't wake up chronically overwhelmed. We aren't constantly in conversation with doubt and indecision. 
And we are able to be much more productive when we don't have the distractions and decision fatigue. Spaciousness lends itself very generously to creativity and easily navigating whatever we're working on. Okay, tip five, get fresh. If you were to hop to my blog or any social media platform, you're going to realize quickly I have a thing for fresh flowers and plants too. Why? Well, when I was new to Shui back in those early experimental days, one of the rituals I decided to give my all to was buying fresh flowers. So A, I know all the excuses for not getting them, and I promise you those excuses are you getting in your own way. And B, fresh flowers are enormously suggestive of wealth. So when the first episodes of this podcast drop, you might recall that I spoke of wealth as not just money, but time and also feeling like we have access to resources. Wealth is also the accumulation of anything that suggests wealth, including free time. So indulging in flowers is a powerful way to make that statement or intention more prominent in your home and life. As for plants, plants refresh a room by literally improving the air around us. And research has found that looking at plants and flowers, it's good for the heart. They induce positive feelings, lower blood pressure, and they also reduce that concentration-induced fatigue. So I say it makes every office and home around the world in need of at least one green chi buddy or bouquet of flowers. The productivity hack here is that in shui speak, fresh flowers and plants, they're considered chi enhancers. That means they lift the energy because one, like I just said, they literally improve the energy around us. And two, they make a space look and feel better. So here you have this energy being pirouetted around your space improving your heart health, lowering your blood pressure, making you feel more relaxed, which turns the workday and its tasks into tailwinds instead of headwinds. Okay, your final productivity tip, yang it up. So in feng shui, yang chi or energy is considered energized, active, bold chi, and it's often associated with work. So Yang offices and rooms will have their own energizing vitality. I want you to think bright colors, happy sounds like music or laughter or conversation, and a pleasing balance of spatial and people energy. Now, while we love yin, chi, or energy for our bedrooms and more private spaces, and I am noting that because I want you to understand that yang is not better than yin. When it comes to our working space, if it is heavily dark due to decor or dim lighting or clutter or a messy desk, yang energy gets suppressed. This squelches our health and relationships. And what's even more problematic is that when that yang energy is out of balance, opportunities and success will feel more out of reach. So Going for anything that feels like a shot of espresso visually would be a really good thing. And the productivity hack here, your energy can get a lift from your environment. Going back to that quote that I shared from James Clear at the beginning of this episode. And if you can get a lift from your environment, that means you don't need to manufacture high energy on your own every day. And I think that that is a task totally worth co-partnering on, don't you? So while you can't see the mechanical energy occurring in any of these hacks, rest assured, every dose of TLC you deliver in your home, in your workspaces, in the places that you dwell, they are literally transforming the energy of those surroundings and that absolutely empowers you. And a powerful you is a sure-footed way to optimize your productivity. And that's our episode, my loves. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to head over to simpleshui.com if you're craving a bigger serving of house love. And if you like what you're hearing, I hope you follow and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And if you love what you're learning, will you leave me a review? Your note will totally make my day and help even more people find the show. 
Have a fabulous day and I can't wait to meet you back here next week. 